So let's start at the beginning. I was driving across country because I was moving from Atlanta to LA. This is a vlog about just some of the stories that happened on my journey from moving from um, Atlanta to LA. My first stop was I wanted to go to Michigan to visit my brother, his wife, and my new nephew. But I knew that I couldn't get there on one single trip, not in one day, it's about 12 hours away. So I stopped in Kentucky, which is kind of like a halfway point. But there was only one person I knew who lived in the entire state of Kentucky, y'all. I know, only one person. And that is my family friend, um, Pam Shaw. Pam Shaw is one of those sweet friends you just don't even know when you started getting to know each other. Um, it's been that long. She has worked with my mother for many years now, and they both are national sales directors with Mary Kay. And so um, we've seen each other all over the country, have been in different um, conventions together, but I've never been to her house. So this is the first time I, I was at her house driving um, from Atlanta to Kentucky on my way to Michigan. I got there super late in the evening, you guys, and so I was leaving kind of first thing in the um, morning, but I could not leave without seeing her closet, her amazing, amazing closet that I've heard so many things about um, firsthand. I mean, how gorgeous is this place? I mean, any of my girly girls out there can like understand an amazing closet is just sanctuary. Like it's, it's a haven. It's gorgeous. So I just had to capture it. <laughs> can you it's awesome. sell it? <laughs> I almost left here without coming back. <laughs> I mean, I know, I know. I was like, because uh, I know you'd eventually ask about it. And I'd be like, oh, I know. gosh, we didn't take time. I know. Okay. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It's, it's bit of, uh, beautiful. Are you kidding me? I this is it. beautiful, <laughs> Pam. Are you kidding me? This is not. This is like. I, I know. I know. I know. Did you turn a whole bedroom? Yeah, it was a. Uh, it, this one, from here to there was a closet, and then we popped that out and raised the ceiling and rebuilt it all in. It's but it's got great beautiful. space. Beautiful, you know. I mean, it's like really, you know, stuff that works, oh. stuff that makes sense. Well, that morning she was actually traveling as well. She took her son to Louisville, and then I was off to um, Michigan um, to visit my family. Michigan I want to spend some time with my brother and my sister in love and my brand new nephew that I had never met before but he was already eight months old meet Chauncey the third also affectionately known as Trey we call him Trey he was at that age where he wasn't standing up on his own or walking on his own, but he was crawling like a master. And I guess he was teething because he was pretty much putting everything in his mouth. He would eat absolutely every and anything that was near him. So it was kind of a fun age to watch him maneuver and grow up and just do his little baby thing. This was their first child at the time. And so, Everything was just kind of like new. He was the new baby on the scene. So it was really, really fun to, you know, just kind of watch him do his little thing. Man down, man down. <laughs> Chicago from Michigan. 
Michigan. But first, we have to stop and fuel up. So I totally botched my ETA time. I told my cousin that I was gonna be there at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time, thinking I was gonna buy myself an hour. But I ended up not leaving, leaving Michigan until 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's about four hours away. So I will get there about 10 p.m. But we also didn't factor in that it is rush hour right Hi. now. Hey. Right now, I'm definitely in traffic. I stayed with my cousin Angelica, otherwise known as Jelly. We all call her Jelly in the family. And it was such a fun time. I didn't get much footage. Um, we spent most of the time, you know, in our head wraps telling stories, watching movies, chilling on the couch, and really how I spend my time a lot of times with my family. So um, we had a good time for the two days that I was there before moving on. Next was on to Kansas City where I stayed with what is like my extended family, aunt and uncle, Jillian and Vince Sr. However, when I was coming through and letting them know I was coming through Kansas City, nobody was home. Vince was on his yacht for the weekend and Vince Jr. and Jillian were in Ireland visiting Jillian's mom. But they were so gracious to just give me the codes to access the house and I knew my way around because I'd been there before and it was just so, such a gracious move. Thank you so much, Jillian and Vince. Now y'all, here was the tricky part. After Kansas City, I did not know anybody until I got to the full West Coast. So basically, I didn't know anybody in the center of the United States. So I called on my mom and I knew that she had a, a great network of um, people um, from her Mary Kay business and they were, they're basically like extended family. And she reached out and I was able to meet Monique in Colorado. Monique and Robert um, welcomed me into their home in Colorado Springs, Colorado, and it was absolutely beautiful. And I'm so grateful that I got to meet them because this Colorado Springs was by far my favorite city, is one of my favorite cities to this day. And this was my favorite part of the trip. Everything about Colorado City is absolutely, I'm sorry, I keep saying Colorado City, Colorado Springs, Colorado is absolutely stunning and beautiful. Monique and Robert live very, very close to um, an area in Colorado Spring called Ga Garden of the Gods. And they have these beautiful rock, natural um, like structures, and it's absolutely beautiful. And I am a nature freak. I love everything about nature. So this was so beautiful just to see it because on the East Coast, you guys, we don't have anything like this. We don't have the mountains, not a lot of them, not in, you know, the Northeast. So to be exposed to this and to see it so differently and to imagine that, y'all, this is still in the same United States and how different it was. I mean, the elevation. We were, their house, I think, was at 8,000 feet and then we started um, and they just gave me a grand tour and I mean this was amazing um, right now you're seeing we went to this place called bear trap I think it was called let me check that out hold on oh, yeah you guys it was called bear trap ranch and it was a place for you know conferences and retreats and so Monique was thinking about having her fall retreat there um, for her business and so we got this uh, amazing tour around the place and I want to tell you guys it was the most beautiful um, place I had ever seen and I have so much footage of it but I just captured a little bit of it here for y'all to see.
then after we went to Bear Trap Ranch, we went to go visit the Broadmoor Hotel um, and Resort, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It's almost at the bottom of the foothill where Bear Trap Ranch was, and they were showing me all around the property and how absolutely beautiful this property and this hotel um, was, and such a staple in Colorado Springs, Colorado. <music> After spending some time in much needed rest in Colorado Springs, Colorado, it was time to keep going on this trip. And so I spent probably about two days there and next was Salt Lake City, Utah. But before I could get to Salt Lake City, you guys, I had to go through Vail, Colorado, which is definitely in the mountains. It's in the Rocky Mountains. And it was hailing there. It The temperature dropped to 55 degrees and it was freezing. I didn't even know I was going through the Rocky Mountains until Snapchat told me I was going through the Rocky Mountains with the filter. <laughs> so it was really funny. But what was not funny was that I had to pull over because I couldn't drive, I couldn't see, and we were going through these mountainous areas and it was completely scary to me. I didn't, I only packed accessible items that were like really um, easy for me to get to and it was the middle of the summer so I had to basically take out all these boxes from my car just to get my raincoat because I wasn't actually um, prepared for snow and winter and sweatshirts and boots and all that stuff so it was really really weird um, I could not find my hood to my coat and I had to pull over in this um, hotel and just to kind of like let the um what's it called the weather die down and just chill out before i can start driving again um but i pulled over in this really beautiful kind of like vale colorado ski resort i didn't know that um i just kind of pulled over off the next exit and it was this dog friendly you know hotel and look at that dog behind the desk y'all the um they were kind of like watching that sweet dog for one of their um, like visitors and they actually said she smelled like Chanel number no. five and her haircut y'all see it y'all will see it a little later is amazing but Vail Colorado just in general and just when I spent just a little a couple of hours there it is absolutely beautiful Just to pass the time for the couple of hours I was there, I decided to just kind of chill and do a little devotional um, and just spend time, you know, um, by just doing a little devotional. And at this time, I think I was doing, I was um, coloring in um, the scripture notebook and listening to worship music. Um, and then these dogs came in, it became like kind of after dinner hour. And um, a lot of the get hotel guests were coming in with their dogs and they were just playing around and they were so cute, you guys. They were playing with each other. And look at this big boy here. This like, I think he was, I don't think he was a lab, but he's a chocolate something. I mean, how cute is this guy? He was so chill and just really nice and sweet and kind. And he just was just relaxed. And I really liked the vibe of that dog. And um and so we just kind of hung out and kind of was introduced to some of those little dogs. That's the Chanel number no. five dog with the haircut, y'all, that I said y'all would see later. She was beautiful. Then it was on the road on the way to Salt Lake City and it was late, but it was clear. I made it to Salt Lake City with um, Julianne Nagel. <whistles> Julianne is, is a great new friend of mine, and um, she was also part of um, my mother's network because she's also a national sales director with Mary Kay. 
Um, well, this is her gorgeous horse, Harley. And this is in her backyard. And this is the view from her bedroom. How gorgeous is this, you guys? Again, as a nature freak, I am all over this. Gorgeous um, green and the mountains in the background. I mean, this was their normal every day, what they saw every day. Like I had never seen mountains in the background like I did, um, you know, in Colorado and Salt Lake City. And I just thought it was breathtaking. A fun fact Julianne was telling me about Harley is that anytime she calls him or anytime he's coming from the back pasture and running up, he always, always comes and kind of lands in between that arch right there. He always goes between that arch whenever he's, you know, called or anything like that. So I thought that was so fascinating and so cute. After that, we went on a mini tour of her beautiful home and met some other fun animals along the way. she was a boy or a girl because they're feathers the boys have colored feathers and the girls oh. just have brown so when I got home my daughter said I'm not sure and I said it's a girl <laughs> are you this fabulous on purpose yes hair you better do it yes gosh you guys Harley was so sweet he was such a sweet boy and I loved spending time with him and getting to meet him, if only just for a little bit. Um, it was absolutely gorgeous that day. Not too hot, you know, not too cold or anything like that. And the thing about Colorado, is, I mean, I'm sorry, Salt Lake City, is it didn't get crazy, humid, hot. So I could stay outside all day. Um, and then Julianne's um, grandson came and we were kind of hanging out with Harley and talking and all that. And he actually is a dancer. And so he came from um, filming a music video. And so his hair and his makeup was still on. And um, he was like, we were just hanging out, um, you know, right there with Harley. And that's this is Julianne kind of feeding Harley an apple. And he gets so cute and slobbery in just a second. Did you? Yeah, because he gets so hot. Right. And he filled his bucket. Okay, you eat because you get all slobbery. You're all slobbery. You don't want to be around him. <laughs> you are too funny, aren't you? You're too funny. Should we put your hat on? Put your sunglasses on. You done? That's all there is, slobber puss. <laughs> After we hung out with Harley for a little bit, Julianne put his sunglasses on. These are his sunglasses, you guys. These protect his eyes from the sun. And I just thought this was precious, so cute. And um, so I decided to keep this in the video and share it with you guys. I really, really enjoyed my time with um, Julianne and Harley. actually moved down not too far um, from Julianne's house I went to go to my friend Tammy and Nikki Craig's home which is it's still in Salt Lake City and originally I was going to stay with them um, when I went to Salt Lake City but unfortunately there was a tragedy that hit their family and they were and they had to travel out of town immediately so um, that's why I was with um, Julianne and I'm so glad that I did. I had 
such an amazing time at Julian's um, house and such amazing memories. One of my favorite memories, I think, of this entire trip um, was being there. And while I was there, Tammy actually re reached out knowing I was there and she was like, hey girl, I know you're an introvert and need some, you know, just like quality time because I haven't had any just alone and quiet time on this entire trip. And I've been gone from Atlanta and haven't reached LA and it's probably been about three weeks now. And so she was like, here are the codes to the house. Just go by, stay there so that you can just kind of like re-up and have your alone time. And I am so grateful for Tammy um, for doing that and giving that gift to me. So that tragedy that I was talking about earlier is that we lost a very close friend, Chris Crake, um, probably about like two weeks earlier when I was in Kansas City, I heard the news and he was such a light, such a bright smile, had the life of the party. He and he was the father of Nikki and Logan and um, he, they were all really, really close. And so it was really, really sad to hear that he had passed during that time. So by the time Nikki and Tammy got home, I just thought it was kind of, um, I thought it was inappropriate to keep vlogging. Um, you know, I thought that at this time they should come home and just kind of hang out and be able to just be grieving how they needed to grieve. And so um, it was important for the cameras to be off and, you know, not to capture this on camera. And so um, opted to, so there's no video footage um, of us kind of being in the house and hanging out with each other. But on the last night I was there, we went to this really cool, authentic Italian restaurant, which I wanted to capture. It was really, really cool how they set this large kind of, it's not a bowl because the cheese is the bowl, but they set it on fire and then they put the pasta inside in order to create um, this pasta dish, this like cheesy pasta dish. And I thought it was so beautiful and so cool to watch them create it. So I captured this and wanted to share this with y'all. I think this was a dish that Tammy and Nikki both ordered, but we went out to like dinner with her and um, with them, me and her neighbor. So it was a lot of fun. Y'all, this had to be like one of the scariest parts of the trip is driving through these mountains, these and the Rocky Mountains. I am not a big fan of driving through mountainous areas. And when I did, I had to like put on Beyonce's um, Beyonce album and just like let it blast. And so that it just kind of took the attention off of what was going on around me because I was literally internally freaking out a little bit driving through these mountains. Um, cause on the East coast, this is what it looks like. And then on the West coast, this is what it looks like. Like it's just amazing here. It is beautiful here. We just got into the Pacific standard time zone. And the cool thing is, is when you're driving west, um, the sunset takes like two hours to set because you're kind of driving towards the sun. Um, and so it's just amazing. So I was able to catch the sunset. It started in Arizona, got light as lighter as we got to Nevada, and now I can actually stop on the side of the road. I think I'm on 15 West, Interstate 15 West, and um, it's breathtaking. It's really breathtaking.
Now entering Las Vegas, Nevada. Now granted, I could have dro driven right through from Salt Lake City to Los Angeles, but in the words of my stepfather, why? So I stopped in Las Vegas in a small town in Henderson and Tammy um, actually had a condo there in Las Vegas and offered that I could stay there. I drove in really late at night because I just didn't know how long it was going to take to get there, but it was about eight hours away from um, Salt Lake City. And I was not prepared for the heat in the next morning. Now, when I got to Tammy's house, um, much like a summer home, there was not much in the refrigerator because something in the refrigerator is going to perish, but there was some bed light. And I was like, you know what? Yes, absolutely. So I drank the Bud Light and went to bed. The next day, it was about 107 or like uh, between 107 and like 113 um, during the day. And that heat, I was not prepared for. So I got so sick, like sick. I guess it was heat stroke or something like that. But I got, I was nauseous. I couldn't get out of the bed. And so, um, you know, when I went to go Google it, what was going on, um, it was just like, you know, you need to drink a lot of water, stay out of the heat, and don't drink any alcohol. Y'all, I was like, oh, <laughs> oops. <laughs> so I had to stay in Las Vegas until I got better, but then it was on to California. California.